I'm Hugh Welshman. I'm the co-writer, co-director, and one of the producers on Loving Vincent, and I'm also the creative director of Breakthrough Films. You know, after doing Peter and the Wolf and The Magic Piano, uh, I never wanted to do another stop-motion film. It was just too agonising, too slow, and um, so I really was looking to go into to live action. And then my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, she was developing this short film called Loving Vincent, uh, which she wanted to entirely paint herself. It was going to be uh, Vincent's last day on the planet, uh, based on his paintings and based on his letters. And uh, obviously, I've heard of Vincent van Gogh. Um, it'd be hard not to have heard of him, but I didn't really know much about him. Um, but we had all these books lying around our apartment, and I started reading them and just became overwhelmed by, by the story and the passion of this man. And at the same time, I was travelling around the world and I was going to museums and... Um, at every museum, the Van Gogh painting was always, uh, there was a scrummage. There was just so many people around it when the rest of the museum could be empty. And um, I, I started talking to, to Dorota, um, you know, can we make this as a, as a feature film? And we've both done a lot of animation and we're like, no, you can't paint an entire film. And I think the tipping point was one exhibition I went to in London, which was about his letters. So inside this exhibition, you had inside cases old letters and people were queuing three and a half hours to get into this exhibition. And, you know, I went home and I said to Dorota, I said, we have to try and make this into a feature film because he's a superstar. And, and you know, you don't really realise until you start looking into it what a superstar. He's like the Kurt Cobain of the, the 19th century and, and, and he just gets more and more popular. So um, we started doing tests um, and the first results were not very encouraging. I mean, they looked gorgeous, but it was taking six hours, seven hours to do each frame of the film. And if you do the maths, that's a lot of hours. Um, so, but we, we weren't disheartened because we really liked how it looked, which, you know, was the main thing. Um, so we did a concept trailer and people responded very well to that. And so the combination of Vincent's popularity and... Uh, the artistic approach that, that we'd come up with, we thought was um, enough, conf gave us enough confidence to go ahead and, and, and paint a film. We started um, uh, turning it into a feature film uh, really in 2011. And so Dorota, for the second half of 2011, started uh, writing the first draft of the script. And uh, we started working together on it full-time from 2012. So we worked on it full-time for five years. Uh, we did nothing else in that time period. Um, but the first two and a half years were really working on the script um, because um, uh, we were developing the technique and we were developing the... Um, infrastructure because people have done been doing painting animation for a hundred years but we were taking it to an industrial scale and so we had to rethink the uh, pipeline for painting animation um, but that was a very small per percentage of our work compared to uh, trying to come up with the script and trying to fit as much from uh, as many Vincent paintings into the film as we could uh, without it you know distracting from the, the the story so we started training painters in 2014 um, we had over 5,000 applications from oil painters around the world uh, from those we selected 700 who did three-day auditions and out of those 700 uh, we selected 150 for intensive animation training um, so out of those 150, 124 ended up working on the film and between them they did 65,000 uh, frames of oil paintings on approximately 2,000 canvases. So the process is, is we were doing it on canvas board at this size, 67 centimetres by 49 centimetres, which is academy ratio. And the reason we chose academy ratio was because uh, most 
Vincent did his paintings in all different frame sizes, but mostly he used uh, size 30, which is very similar to um, the old uh, Hollywood Academy ratio, um, which is why we have an unusual ratio. Dorota initially, because Dorota's a fine art painter and has had lots of animation experience, um, so initially when it was a short film she was going to paint it all herself, uh, painting on glass, which is the traditional style. Um, but the main problem was is we couldn't really get the impasto and it just didn't look enough like Van Gogh painting. So we started experimenting and surprise, surprise, the thing that <laughs> looked most like Van Gogh painting is oil paints on canvas. Uh, so we tried acrylic, we tried glass, um, we tried a lot of techniques, but, but that was the way that we could get the closest to the look. And, you know, people will appreciate that... Um, I mean, we are reimagining Vincent's paintings. You cannot directly translate them onto film. It's a different art form. And, you know, uh, he composed them as a single image, whereas, you know, uh, once you start moving things over time, there are a lot of different considerations. But still, uh, even though we're reimagining his paintings, we wanted people to really see which paintings we were reimagining and to really feel that they were inside Vincent's world, inside his paintings. And the best way to do that was to use oil paints on canvas. One of Vincent's most famous paintings that always um, comes up in the you know, top ten most known paintings of all time is Café Terrace at Night. And this painting is this size. <laughs> so the opposite is like someone took a cinema screen and put it that way. And um, we didn't want to change that painting because it was just too famous. So what we did is we did a camera move from the top of the painting down to the bottom of the painting. Now, we had one canvas like this, and the artist started out painting the top of that painting and then moved it millimetres by millimetres, you know, for the next, uh, uh, I think it was about 220 paintings that... that uh, uh, she did for that. I was always an accidental short maker, um, so uh, the reason that Peter and the Wolf was half an hour long was because of the Prokofiev piece of music was half an hour long, and the reason I got a commission to do something on Chopin for a family audience that was half an hour was because of Peter and the Wolf winning the Oscar. Um, so it was always my plan to do feature films um, because uh, the revenue... Uh, back to you um, is much more predictable in terms of there are many more um, established business channels for money coming back to you on feature films than there are on short films. So um, I would say that, that, that uh, it was always my intention to do feature films and um, that it was just as difficult to raise the finance on every single project I've ever done. I've never found that it was an easy process. Um, maybe I'm not very good at it, but um, it's. I feel like every time I start from scratch, so even after I'd won an Oscar and I was going and pitching ideas, um, I think I, I, I jumped through as many hoops as I did um, prior to the Oscar, and I'm sure... Uh, after loving Vincent, even though I think it's going to do pretty well, I'll be jumping through new hoops for my next film. Yeah, I mean, after after the Peter and Wolf and, and the, the Chopin films, I was like, never again. And I ended up doing something which was, in terms of animation, several times slower than, than, than puppet animation. Um, so, uh, but... The time flew by because, you know, what I was seeing was something I'd never seen before and, and I, I'm, I'm completely um, obsessed by painting animation at the moment. So um, uh, whether the world will let me make another painting animation feature film, I don't know, but if they do, then I want to make a really scary horror film for adults bringing together, you know, br based on, I know, Goya or Caravaggio, uh, some really dark paintings. And I, I do think in this modern age with, with the uh, Netflix and Amazon um, uh, and, and just, a, just a range of, of, of places out there and uh, different ways to finance your film, that I think it's actually more possible than it, it would have been if I'd tried to pitch to anyone, you know, 15 years ago, I'm going to do an adult uh, painted animation horror film. But ask me in two years' time how I'm getting on with that. <laughs>